Hello, buddy, and welcome to Where Are They Now in Sports, live from the Shave in Beverly Hills. Today's guest is a former Major League Baseball player that started his Major League Baseball career with the San Francisco Giants. He played with players like Willie Mays, Willie McCovey. After the San Francisco Giants, he went to the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he played with legendary players like Roberto Clemente, Bill Mazeroski, Willie Stargell. After the Pittsburgh Pirates, he went to the Montreal Expos just for a little bit, and then he got traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers, and that's when his journey started as one of the greatest pinch hitters to play the game. He's been with the Dodgers organization the past 46 years as a player and a coach. Please welcome Manny Moda in the house. How are you, buddy? I'm fine, thank you. Was that thank a good you. order right there? Was that a good? No, no, that was good. That was, that was great. good. All right, I'm just making sure I didn't miss no, anything, did thank I? Thank you for that introduction. It's a very honor and great pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me here. Give me that honor. Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you for coming out here. You know, when you made your Major League debut in 1962, you had players like Willie Mays, Willie McCovey. I think you had another Dominican player, Juan Mar Marichal. You also Felipe had... Felipe Lu also. Yes, Felipe Lu. You also had a brother there too, right? Orlando Cepeda was there. Orlando Cepeda, right. Yeah. Maria Lu. That, 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 was a, that was a squad. That year, they actually went to yeah. the World Series. But before we talk about that, let's talk about who took you under your wing when you were with the San Francisco Giants? Like when you came to the clubhouse, who welcomed you and said, hey, welcome? Well, I remember <laughs> during spring training in 1962, uh -huh. I was taking fly ball in center field, you know, trying to do my work. And somebody came behind me and he touched me in the back. And he said, Chico, fly ball here? No. He said, he pointed to me, take it on left or take it on right. But here in center field, don't take fly ball. And that was Willie Mays. Wow. <laughs> but Willie, where is the person after that? He take me under his wing and helping me in every possible way. What ways did he help you as far as, how, did he teach you how to read balls off the bat in the outfield? Did he tell you what to look for? He teach me how to play the outfield, how to get in position, how to fill the ball with the sound of the bat, mm -hmm. and how to move in the outfield when the ball was hit. He helped me move to my left, to my right, and then back. He really was very, very great teacher for me, Willie Mays. I'm very grateful to Willie. Absolutely. Did you ever have dinner with him? What do you like to eat? <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, but we talk about hitting mm -hmm. because I like to learn, you know, I like yeah. to listen to good hitters and he gave me some, a lot of ideas, but I was not the type of hitter Willie was. I was a single hitter and Willie was a long ball hitter. But he teach me a lot about the game. And I paid a lot of attention and I learned a lot from Willie Mays. I got a great deal of respect for Willie. He was a great player. And besides being a great player, he was a wonderful person. After the San Francisco Giants, you're only there for just a little bit, right? You had like 74 at-bats. Um, then you went to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, tell me the experience about Roberto Clemente. Man, this guy's, I mean, may, may he rest in peace, but God, what a... I wish I was living back then, just to see how he played. Talk to me about that. Well, I have a great time in Pittsburgh. I played in Pittsburgh for six years. Wow. That was a beautiful city, great fans, and I have the opportunity and the privilege and the honor to play alongside with one of the best players of the game, Mr. Roberto Clemente. He teach me a lot about hitting. If I learn about hitting, and I improved my hitter, I'd like to thank Roberto Clemente. Wow. He really teach me how to, how, to, how to hit. And not only that, I was Roberto Clemente fan because I admire him, the way he played the game. And I used to play center, I used to play with Maria Lu. Mm -hmm. Clemente used to play right. And one day Clemente said to me, Manny, men on third base, and men on second base, anything to my to my right, to your left, I take it. Because he wanted to take care of the runner. Right. And he, he, he covered a lot of ground for me. He, he really protected me. And he was a great, great human being. I love Roberto. 
we treat each other like a brother. Yeah, he yeah. used to come to visit me in the Dominican, I used to come to visit him in Puerto Rico. We got a good relationship, a great deal of respect for Roberto. Now, will Roberto Clemente, his arm strength, was is that one of the best arm strengths you saw? I mean, you've been in baseball for a long time. Well, without a doubt, that was the very, the best throwing arm I ever see. And the accuracy baseball. was perfect? Yeah, perfect. Wow. And strong. And the, the thing really surprised me, you know, like uh, when we warm up, we take about 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And Roberto used to be the last guy to come out on the field when this game going to start. And he did not warm up. And then the first play by right field, and Roberto threw a bullet to the base. He, was, he wasn't loose, right. but he got a natural ability to play the position and to throw the ball the, the way he used to throw. He was without a doubt the best throwing on I ever saw in the game. You and Roberto Clemente on the road, were you guys roommates? No, Roberto room by himself. Mm, okay. You know, the boss, you know, we have a time for the boss to link to the ballpark. And Roberto Clemente come out to the boss at the last minute. Mm. Every time right. at the last minute, Roberto come to get the boss. He got a lot of pride on being Puerto Rican. And also that, not only that, on being the best right fielder in baseball. Right, right. You know, but he take a lot of dedication. Yeah. Because he wants to be the best. You know, let me tell you what happened one time. One time we finished the game, right? Mm -hmm. And Roberto said to me, he used to call me Geronimo. He said, Geronimo, I want you to come out early to the ballpark tomorrow. I said, for what? He said, just be here. And I tell you what, we get to the stadium. He say, give a bucket of ball with 75 ball. Mm -hmm. Say, for what? He said, get a fungo. I said, wait a minute, Roberto, I'm not a coach, I'm a player like you are. Right. He said, okay, just get a fungo. And he said, now let's go to home plate. I said, okay, now what? What's going on now? He said, do you remember last night? I missed the ball, hitting down the right field line. He said to me, I want you to hit me 75 ball the same way because I want to know why I missed that ball. Wow. Being the best right fielder in baseball, he wants to get better. So when I hit about 35, he said, stop. I say why? He say, I find out where the ball hit and get away from me last night. But he said, you got 40 more ball? I want you to hit me 40 more ball because he wants to be perfect and that's why he was the best right fielder in baseball. When you got that dedication, you know, to your job, you got surprised. He was proud to be the best right fielder in baseball. And that's the reason why he was the best in baseball. Yeah. After you left the Pirates, you were there six years, five to six years? Six. six I enjoyed years. beautiful six years of baseball. After you left the Pirates, you came to the Montreal Expos. What pick were you in the expansion draft? Expansion draft. I was the first player, the first pick in the expansion draft from the Montreal Expo. Jim Mark, the late Jim Mark. Uh huh. He's, he's he selected me in the draft. And so you played there for a little bit, like, like what, one month? Yeah, maybe from April to June. Oh, April to June. Okay. I was on a re rehab program mm -hmm. because I broke my elbow. Ouch. Play the ball, Yikes. and I had this friend, but. When I played there, I was hitting good, and then they trained me to L.A. And when they trained me to L.A., that was a blessing. It because was a blessing. get away from the cold weather in Montreal. Because <laughs> the Dominican Republic gets yeah, hot right, around, yeah. right. <laughs> and also, because I was in rehab in my elbow mm -hmm. after the surgery, and the cold weather in Montreal didn't help me. But when I come to L.A., I see the sky open. That was a blessing because the weather helped me a lot to so heal my elbow. When you got to Los Angeles Dodgers, okay, literally, your journey started from there. I mean, you were, you know, it's still going right now. So tell me about your experience. In the 70s, you with the Los Angeles Dodgers, you guys actually, six years, you've ended up in second place. You went to three World Series, you lost all three. So the 70s wasn't that good of a decade as far as going all the way and winning it. But, I mean, ended up in second place. Who was the first place team that just dominated those years? 
Well, the big red machine. Oh yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> big red machine because they used to have a beautiful team, good baseball team. They know how to play the game. Mm -hmm. And besides that, they got a good manager, Sparky Anderson. Yeah. Tell me the experience about Tommy Lasorda. First year in 1977, you guys went to the World Series that year. But what was it like playing for Tommy Lasorda? What was it? What would he say, Manny? Grab a bat, whatever. What do you do? Tell that, me a classic that, story. No, that was a fun playing for Tommy. <laughs> Tommy was a great motivator. Right. He know how to motivate the player to give the best out of the mm -hmm. player he got. In the movie Scarface, uh -huh. Al Pacino cursed 182 times with the F bomb. Okay. <laughs> so I want to know. After Reggie Jackson hit three home runs against the Dodgers in the 77 World Series, how many F-bombs, if you gambled the over and under out of Tommy Lasorda's mouth, would I, it be over I, 182 I or think, under? I think it'd be Al Pacino. <laughs> he would? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm saying, do you think, was that, was, because yeah. remember, Reggie Jackson hit those three home runs yeah. on first pitches. So yeah. was there a scouting report, don't throw him a strike, <laughs> you know, what was going on there? Yeah, but you got to give Reggie credit. Uh -huh. Only for the first yeah, pitch, right? because he was a great hitter, great power hitter. And what he accomplished that that day, that's part of the history. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, but that Tommy wasn't happy about that, but that gave Reggie credit. Speaking of being a great pinch hitter, that was your role, okay? Once uh, after a little bit with the Dodgers, after what? 1974, 75? 1974. 1974. Uh-huh. Delay Walter Larson. See, because I used to platoon with Billy Bogner mm -hmm. and Willie Crawford. Right. I used to play against right left-hander. They used to play against right-hander. One day, Walter called me to the office. He said, Manny, for now, I don't want to play on the field anymore. I got two young kids, mm -hmm. which I need to play. He said, from now on, I want you to prepare to be my pinch hitter. So from that day, I started to prepare myself and I want to be the best in the business. I know I wasn't going to play every day. I wasn't going to be for at bat. So that's why preparation is so important in this game. Say I, that to the camera. Say the preparation. I want these young kids say, to understand Preparation that. is very important in this game. I started preparing myself physically, but more mentally. Because this game is more mentally than physically. And I prepare myself to be the best pincher I can possibly be. Okay, so give me the experience. You're in the dugout, okay? You're in the dugout. Are you looking, studying the pitcher, how it's coming out of his hand, how the release point, how he has a strategy, how he's pitching to guys? Talk to me about that. I watch everything on the pitcher. I watch in the catcher to see how they pitch to different hitter. Mm -hmm. And then I put myself in that pitch or hit a memory hitter like me to see how they pitch that guy. And that gave me idea about going to the play and approach the guy. But one thing I have in myself was a lot of confidence. Right. I have a lot of confidence, a lot of concentration, and mental preparation. I agree with that, yeah. I believe in myself, but I gave myself prepare to do the best job possible as a pinch hitter. I used to sit at the bench, but I got bad in my hand all the time. I can play with the bat in my hand, but I'm watching the pitcher. Right. I'm watching to see what can I get from. Maybe from holding the ball, moving the glove. And then I used to have a book in my mind about every pitcher in the league. Because not every time I started pitch going to go nine innings. Right. And I used to pinch it from the seventh inning on. Oh. Right, right. So by that time, maybe the starter wasn't there. And they bring the best reliever. So I was, I got a book in my mind about those reliever best pitch, about the stuff they have. And then that gave me an idea how to prepare myself to approach those guys. But one thing, I believe myself. Right. I trust myself. I believe in my ability. And when I went to the home plate, to pinch it, I feel like I was, at that particular moment, the best hitter on the game. So you're in your head, once you get in the batter's box, you're saying, I am the best hitter. It's hard for you to get me wow. out, my man. That's what you're thinking in your head. That's what I'm thinking. I oh, say, okay. the problem was not for me to get a hit. I say, the problem is for him to get me out because I can be him.
I like that at home, babe. You pump it. I want to hit right now, man. Where, where's the because that, that's the confidence right, I right. have I went to the plate. And I feel like it any time into the plate, I feel like I'm going to get a hit. And I was not afraid to hit it behind the count. In some situations, I take two strikes. Intentional. Right. But I say, I can take two, but I cannot take three. <laughs> right, right. Well, now, yeah, of course. <laughs> now I got to gotta go to work. I got to change my approach. I got to put the ball in play and make contact. Sometimes if I think she with nobody on base, right. I swing, I swing hard. Right. That was me swinging that hard. You know, I, wa I want to get loose. I want to get my muscle right, loose. Right. I swing hard, but I don't want to hit the ball because I want to get back to my approach and just try to make contact. If you make contact, you got a chance. The situation will dictate me what to do right. in that situation as a pinch hitter. But I believe myself so much and I trust myself so much. You know who play big part for a pinch hitter? Say that again? You know who play big part in a pinch hitter? Defense. Yeah. Yeah. The way they greeted me when I went to the plate, that gave me kind of a motivation and elevated myself to another level, higher level, to try to do my job and not let them down. Also, don't let down the manager who sent me to the plate and my teammates. But one thing I learned, I learned about pinch hitting one time, I remember, day game, bases loaded, mm -hmm. two outs, game on the line, three and two count, we play in San Diego. And the Bud Miller, Lay Bud Miller, right hand, he make a pitch about that far outside, but okay. was too high. So the umpire called me, out, finish the game. I say to myself, that's going to be the last time I'm going to be caught out on a strike as a pinch hitter. If I'm going to go down, swing I'm going to go down like good, like good soldier, fighting and swinging. Right. And after that, I win about 500 bats more. I strike out, but swinging the bat because that's, that's when they sing you to pinch it mm -hmm. and they give you the bat, it's for swinging the bat and not to take. Right. Now, Manny. Do you think you being, you know, a player and a coach, do hitters now come to you on the deep down and say, yo, Manny, I'm afraid to fail. Get me out of the slump. Do big leaguers come up to you and say that? Well, we talk about it then. I mean, you know when they 0 for 21 or 1 for 18? Well, like, that's where you got to talk to them and try to build their confidence and let them know that's part of the game. Right. And sometimes hitter. They tried to come out of slow hitting a home run, tried to hit it to Pasadena. No. Just try to go the other way, make good contact. When you try to go the other way, you stay behind the ball, you keep your hands inside. Right. And then that allows you to see the ball better. Right. So the longer you wait, the, the better longer, it is. The better it will be. Yes. Just but, don't but, try to do so much. Well, let me ask you, in the Dodgers organization, do they tell you guys to let the ball get deep on the outside pitches or they want you to hit it out in front more? No, they, the way they teach is to let the ball get deeper. Deep, okay. Because that way you're gonna recognize the pitch better. But you gotta have quick hands to do that. Oh yeah, you can do that, you right. can do that. You don't wanna be in front, you'd rather be yeah. back here And then foul it off, here. right? Right. Because right. then you then and, you hit a weak all, ground ball. If right. you're out front. Yeah, because right. you're gonna roll your hand, your top right. hand. Right. But when you stay behind the ball, keep your hands inside, keep your hands in that position. And you can wait long enough and you'll be surprised what you can do when you let the ball come to you and don't go out and get the ball. You know, one time we got a game the line playing Cincinnati, mm -hmm. 19, winning on second base. They got a guy named uh, Rolly Eastwick, pitcher from Cincinnati. <laughs> good good, good, good reliever. Okay. The best reliever on the team. I say, okay, I'm going to face with Eastwick, I'm going to hit the fastball. I want Eastwick to throw me the slider. Because I'm I going to let it go deep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let it go deep and I'm going to hit it right to the right field line. Okay? First pitch fastball, I take it. Strike one. I say, now I'm going to throw my slider. And I'm going to be ready. And then, I, when I got the pitch, this outside corner of the plate, I get my hand behind, get my head on the ball, hit a line drive down the right field line. Well, you know what happened? Surprise, because Sparky Anderson know me so well. So he, moved, so he moved the guy down the right field line. I hit the ball. I said, "Oh, the game is over. We're gonna win." I was surprised when I saw that guy catching the ball right in front of him. 
And then when I looked the sparky hand, so I said to me, money, I got you. <laughs> they got the report, my man. They got the report. Yeah. 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 In that 1981, you guys won the World Series. Were you on the roster that year? I was there. I was, I was coaching first base. Where'd you guys party afterwards? Where'd you go? Where'd you go in Los Angeles? Where'd you go? Well, that was a parade. Okay. No, but I'm talking about in afterwards, downtown. that night. After this, the we champagne. We celebrated at the that. stadium, at the clubhouse, and also the stadium club. That was a good that celebration. When you win, you celebrate. Okay, so there was you no enjoy like, the right. victory. But there you was no special. The soup to the victory when you win. Special you invitation lose, to you restaurants. Lose, nobody wants to see you. Oh, of course. Right. I I forget what kind of whatever what restaurant we went to, but whatever we win, we enjoy it. Right. Because we win, and at that moment we know we are the best team in baseball. 1988, World Series. Kirk Gibson, when he hit that home run. Did someone, who told Kirk Gibson that Eckersley throws sliders with two strikes? Be aware. We used to have a scout named Mel Didier. Mm -hmm. He used to be the advanced scout for us, and he's the guy responsible for giving that report to Kirk Gibson about what to expect right. from Eckersley in that situation. He's the guy who told him he liked to use the slider in that situation, he got the slider, Hit a home run. You know, in, in that game, I believe Mike Davis running first base, right? Mm -hmm. I'm coaching first base. I say, Mike, do not steal second base. He wanted to steal? Yeah, but I said, no, because we're going to lose the kitchen. Right. They're going to walk in to pitch the sacks. Right, right. I right. say, no, don't do that. And in that count, I thought they were going to get kids or anything to hit. Because Sachs is coming behind and Eckley was tough against right hander. Yeah. But when I saw that, I said, oh, good. Pitch to him. And they pitched to them, they pitched to Gibby, and he paid for it. One of the most dramatic moments in Dodgers oh Stadium. Oh, God. Yeah, that home run was priceless. Yeah. So you guys won the World One leg. One leg, I know. Yeah. He was crippled. Yeah, he was yeah. crippled. You mentioned 1981, but you forget to mention about. The duel between Reggie Jackson and Bobby Welch. Yeah, yeah. Remember that's that right. battle? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Bobby Welch win that battle. Yeah, Welch yeah, won. Like Bobby Welch. Maybe nothing, peace, yeah. nothing but fastball. And you see a Reggie reaction. You can see the stress in his face when he missed the pitch. They're like, do you, do you like feel that breeze when he swings yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, I like. He used to love to swing. He, he used to love his swing. He's a he plays guerrilla baseball. Oh, yeah, all out, yeah, you he know? Was, yeah, yeah. He was tough. He was a tough hitter. So 1988, you won the World Series. Um, yeah. you, you actually, man. I mean, they were tough. Oakland A's. I mean, they yeah, got they some, was a good team. They, yeah. they were the best team in baseball. Yeah. Those guys know how to play, and they, they play together, they play the game right. Besides that, they got a good money, Tony La Russa. So my question is, what are you doing now? Right now, mm -hmm. I am a major league instructor. Okay. I go to swing training. I help Mark McGuire and John Valentin in swing training to work with the hitters and get the hitters prepared to play in the season. Mm -hmm. After swing training, I still go into the clubhouse, but not in uniform. I still go to the clubhouse and talk to the player. If they want to talk to you and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah, talk to the player, do that kind of communication with the manager, and see how I can help the ball club. Mm -hmm. But after that, I go upstairs, because I do TV. I'm a commentator. With Jorge Harrain, do the play-by-play, the -play, and I do the I am the analyst nice. of the game. So when you do broadcast, like Vince Scully, next next door neighbor? <laughs> no, well, not, not too far from Vinny. That, I'm just saying in the booth. In yeah, the, the booth, he's on the other side or something like that? Yeah, but I, I, the analyst, and I try to describe the game to make it simple. You know, Manny, you, you, you've done so much great things for your country, Dominican Republic. You know, you have foundations. Tell me about your foundations, what you're doing with that and helping people out. Because I've seen a nice paragraph about you. And well, we, we have a foundation. Uh -huh. The whole family is involved in foundation. Okay, tell the camera. What's the name of the foundation? Mani Mora International Foundation. And tell us about that. What we do, we're helping needy people. Older people, children. We got a 
beautiful programs over there. On this year, we fit in for lunch from Monday to Friday, about 38,000 kids. Feeding lunch, 38,000 like 38, kids a year. And, and giving them cooked meal, we give them the same amount. All together, we feed about 70,000 people. Wow. We give we give them some shoes, we give them some clothes, we got some we got some medical fare, mm -hmm. we got some little league. We got about three hundred kids playing in the little league. Now and if people wanna donate to that, where do they go if they wanna donate to that? Well they can find uh, in the website the Money Motor International Foundation. Okay. See here, before I go home, mm -hmm. I load in one container with a lot of goods, rice, beans, clothes, toys, to take back to the Dominican, and medication also, and also giving to the poor people of the Dominican Republic. I enjoy this something back to my country, right. and do something for the key, something I will never have the opportunity to have, or enjoy my family. We're very grateful to the Lord for giving us the opportunity to spend some time with the kids. You know, when the kids have lunch over there every day, I had the same lunch. Right, because right. I want them to see I'm a human being like they are. I want to build their self-esteem and their confidence. And they, I want them to see somebody care right, about right. them. The whole family care about all of those kids and all of those people who are in the foundation of the Dominican Republic. And how many kids do you have? Eight. So that's pretty much a baseball team plus you, <laughs> right? Yeah, we got six boys and two girls. Oh, okay. I'm so happy and so grateful to Lord for giving us a beautiful wife mm -hmm. and a great, great kid. Besides that, we had 23 grandkids. 23 grandkids. 23 grandkids. Actually, one of the kids is a principal in New York City, right? In the Bronx? I see oh, that Sandy. Yeah. Sandy Taveras. Yeah. yeah. I, and my son, Jose, working with the angel. Okay. He's the one of the announcer. He's the announcer. Yes, yes. Him. So we, we blessed by good Lord for giving us that great opportunity to do something for the people really need it. But one thing we really focus on the kids is to get good education. Because right. to us, education is a treasure. You got to get a good education. We emphasize a lot on the kids to get a good education. Stay in school, finish high school, and go to college. When you go to college, that's the best gift you can give to your parents. When you get away from college, nobody can take that away from you. You know why? Because you get about, uh, about a lot of perseverance and a lot of dedication. That's something you're gonna enjoy for the rest of your life. So stay in school, respect your parents, respect your teacher, and treat everybody the way you like to be treated, as a human being. You know what? On that conclusion, <laughs> that's about it with my man, Manny Motor. So nice having you, Thank you know. You, such Thank a pleasure, you for having you know? me. Please, subscribe to Eddie Mara channel, because I'm going to subscribe, so please follow me. You're really gonna enjoy this show, because Rada does one of the best in Southern California.